Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Hi everybody, I'm Michael. I'm Molly. And today we are discussing music in Final Fantasy VI. So I've asked Molly here because she doesn't know Final Fantasy VI, but does know music and has plenty of opinions on music. I'm going to play various character themes. Um, there are themes that represent places and things like that too, but we're just gonna stick to the characters. I have organized them in alphabetical order by character name, so it's not like introducing them in a way that um, the first one you hear is the main character, so type of thing. It's not gonna be that. Okay. But what I would like you to do while you're listening, any general thoughts on who you think the character is based on their theme? Okay. Including things like how old do you think the character is? Okay. Gender of the character? Okay. If they're a hero or a villain? Okay. Just anything else that comes to mind. Just as a sort of disclaimer before we start, I don't love all of these, but I think the ones that I especially don't like are interesting. Okay. I mentioned this to Molly before, but this is something that I did in one of my classes with my students. We didn't go through all of them. I just picked four that I thought were interesting and had the students talk about them. This is part of a larger thing that I did where we talked about music in other media. Are you going to give me a grade, Professor Overhouse? <laughs> no. But if you want to give me an A+, plus, that would be okay. <laughs> I'll hold any of my thoughts until the end. So let's start the first one. I was just about to say there's something mysterious about it, but then it did that mode change that makes me think that this is a character that has a dark past but is hopeful full and probably a heroic character of some kind definitely i'm definitely getting feminine from it i'm getting youth although with the whole dark past thing maybe not that much youth it almost has like a nursery feel to it so maybe there's something maternal about this character am i shouting a little bit <laughs> <laughs> oh there was like a minor chord there and now it's resolving back in the major we're going on a whole harmonic journey here <laughs> although maybe the harmonic journey says something about the character also having a journey a number two okay i'm getting orientalism with this flute that's playing a vaguely pentatonic melody and then these drums that feel sort of militaristic so maybe a soldier but like the kind of soldier from like an Eastern tradition where it's like very Zen about it. So like we're killing people, but like meditating. <laughs> There's definitely a macho vibe. Oh, it did that major key switch again. I think we're gonna keep seeing that probably. This is again, heroic. So I'm gonna say that this must be some kind of warrior, a heroic warrior of some kind. And I guess we're talking about age. I would say again, like prime age that you would expect a warrior to be. This is not the grizzled old seen some shit guy. This is the guy that is like ready to go. He's mastered all of his fighting skills and, and the meditation and he's gonna go do it. Vanquish evil. We have Sith horns happening. It's kind of a fanfare. So I'm getting regal, royalty, somebody of great stature and importance and wealth and power. And with wealth and power, I think age comes with that. So this is a more mature character. I don't know that it is explicitly masculine or feminine. I think it feel it feels more masculine because I associate power and masculinity. But I think that it doesn't necessarily have to be that. The music just did that switch thing again into like a synth string thing that feels, again, very noble. So I think this is also probably somebody that's on the side of good, somebody uh, who is a ruler of some kind. Here we have a synth cello and a synth harp, I think, or guitar. And it has a very folk feeling. Um, it's very romantic. Um, it's very pastoral. So this uh, is probably a peasant type person who is maybe a romantic lead of some kind, a romantic interest. It could be masculine or feminine, but because it's a cello, I'm gonna go with masculine. This is a, a heartthrob kind of character, a, a young, uh, youthful. Am I getting it right? I will say more at, at the end. <laughs> I want the A plus. Okay, we have drums. Okay, and now it's like, Circus music. This is a comic relief character of some kind, a uh, jester, but there's something vaguely sinister about it. So I think this might be the first bad guy we've encountered, but not a very sophisticated bad guy. This is a bumbling 
foolish, idiotic, you know, very um, wily coyote <laughs> kind of like, I'll get you this time with my maniacal contraption. Oh, but now it's like all kind of groovy. <laughs> I've got some blue notes in there. <laughs> this is a character we're supposed to laugh at and not sympathize with. Okay, so there was a very specific thing there that I think was has to be intentional, which is Hall of the Mountain King. Hall of the Mountain King implies a journey, a careful, plodding, forward motion. Of course, this is a character and not a place. I'm imagining a place with this music, like a video game stage where you're trying to solve a puzzle or something, but it must not be that if it's a character. It's also getting giving me circus again. I don't know if it's pop culture that has made us associate circus with sort of things that are grim and not as they seem. And so I think I can't trust whoever this is. This is an untrustworthy person who has a lot of tricks up their sleeve. This is a person I don't trust. That's all I know. Okay, this again feels heroic and militaristic, but it feels smaller. So I think to me, this is a character of lower importance. And I'm kind of thinking if I'm playing a video game, which is something I don't do very often, but if I am, sometimes there's a place where it's like, there's a vendor that you go to, to like trade out your weapons or something. And I wonder if this is the music that is playing in the blacksmith shop where I can go get my sword repaired or whatever. I'm wondering if I, if I got it wrong because it felt more important at the end than it did at the beginning. This feels more modern and poppy than anything I've heard so far. A very modern sounding melody. And is that a synth banjo? <laughs> so this is another, I think, comic relief character. This is somebody, but I don't think, I'm not getting evil. I'm not, I'm not getting sinister, but I am getting whimsical, silly, and youthful. So maybe this is a child, S somebody who is playful. I'm getting romance again. And I'm getting a callback to that cello theme I heard earlier. So I think this is the feminine version of that couple or the fem feminine uh, member of that couple, because it's again, uh, it's echoing all the same feelings. There's that harp underneath and uh, we have a, a synth flute or something, um, woodwind of some kind. It has a, a a folk, again, a folk and pastoral feeling and a very romantic yearning quality to it. So I think I think this must be the, the other one of the young lovers. Okay, this is also a very romantic theme and also a very pastoral theme. This is somebody that is associated with one of the lo young lovers. It might be a parent or a best friend. You know, I don't know if you're giving me a trick question and there is a couple's theme in addition to the theme for each character in the couple. I think this is a parental figure who is maybe saying goodbye to a young person who's getting ready to set off on an adventure or something like that. We're at the circus again. Wait, are we at the circus or are we at a military barracks? Okay, okay, no, it's neither. Okay, this is a boastful character who is proud and macho, who wants to challenge or be challenged, which tells me it could be a good guy or a bad guy, but I think all the music that I thought was bad guys had this vague circus quality to it, and I wonder if this sort of fits in with that. It's almost like this person is more, they they claim to be more than they actually are. Okay, we have a some kind of springy effect here over top of a harp, synth harp, and a synth penny whistle. I'm getting Wild West here, and so I think this is a lone rider type. Somebody who is a loner, is a rugged person who fends for themselves out in the wilderness, and they might be able to help you out, or they might be able to harm you, and they are not really on the side of good or evil, they're only on the side of themselves. There's something sinister here. This is a character that cannot be trusted. 
maniacal, uh, manipulating, plotting, planning. And, you know, I realize I'm not saying any of the specific things that you asked about, like gender or age or anything, Doesn't because matter. I'm getting more like just general feel. This must be um, a nefarious character who is either evil or is like, I, I'm again thinking of in video games when you have, you go into a shop or whatever. So this could be a person who is just out for themselves trying to earn some capital by buying and selling and maybe without very fair prices. Oh, now it's serious. Now things are very serious. So we have that Orientalist feel again, although we also kind of have the Wild West feel again. This is heroic and it feels like a character who is a fighter, but only when necessary. Again, in that sort of Zen kind of way. Although I'm now questioning myself because now I'm wondering if this is meant to be pastoral and if this is another parental figure or like a best friend figure from wherever is home. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know there could be this many characters in a video game, honestly. <laughs> So I feel like I'm running out of tropes, but I don't know that we've done a best friend. So maybe that's what it is. Do I still get an A plus? Actually, is this the hero? Is this the hero? No, the romantic lead would be the hero. I don't know what to make of this, honestly. It's all over the place. <laughs> oh, this must be the big bad. Because this is the circus music again, but it feels like it has more gravity to it. Uh, with those tim synth timpani. This is a bad guy. This is somebody who is instructing others to do for them but doesn't get their hands dirty that's who this is because they're too they're not strong enough to do any actual fighting themselves you basically nailed pretty much everything <laughs> yeah and, <laughs> a plus there are a couple things that you didn't nail one of the things is there's actually only one villain in this that has their own theme oh and it's not the last one. Oh. when you were saying about do you get an a plus i think this is really about does the composer nobu Uematsu get an a plus for actually getting these things across in the music. Do I look yeah. like Mariah Carey? Yeah. <laughs> so you got that this was the uh, this was a female character, and you got the dark past. I, that was really interesting. Okay. Look, if I was trying to write that musically, this is exactly the music I would write. Noble warrior, you absolutely nailed. He is like the samurai character, basically. Mm -hmm. He is he is an older person though. He is married okay. and, and has a child. This one's a little confusing because it's both the theme for two characters. Trick question. And it, this is also sort of a place thing. This this is this one's sort of like a lot of things in once. Um, I knew this, he was gonna trick me. The, this one does get other versions later on that go into more of the like psychology of the characters. Okay. These are two brothers. Okay. Who uh and the older one is the king of a country. Yes. Um he's young though. He he's like 20. He's, he he okay, was sorry. made. He was made king too early. It's the same fanfare <laughs> they've been using for the king for generations um, uh, yeah. in this land. So um, the the younger brother on their father's deathbed, he wanted the two of them to to rule jointly. The younger one's like, "Fuck all this! I want out." Is he the bad guy? No. Oh, he's a good guy. Um, so he goes off to like find himself type of thing. This is one of the ones that I don't think is super effective as a theme this is a young this character this is romantic not romantic oh. this is a child who uses a cello for a child yeah he was <clears throat> abandoned by his mentally unstable and abusive father and raised in like by wolves essentially oh and, cool and is really bad at communicating with people and doesn't well, and, raised and, by wolves and speaks in broken english yeah i feel like that one doesn't quite nail it like it it feels lonely and sad which makes sense yeah but other than that like it I feel no i you don't use a cello for a child that just doesn't make sense yeah okay you you picked up on the clownish theme of this one this is a very, very, very small character, and he's even optional. You don't, he, like, he's hidden. You, you can mm -hmm. find him in Ricky Room if you want. Also, gender is not specific in this character. You never mm -hmm. see anything about them. Um, they're dressed in, like, head-to-toe giant robe, like, motley robes, um, and they are a mimic. They, well, as they seem. Yeah, but they... Um, they join the good guys. They they are a good character, but they, okay. they like, they're, like, special powers. They can do exactly what someone else just... I think they just associate circus with evil. Well, <laughs> you also said circus for this one. And this is the main villain. This was the one I also said Hall of the Mountain King for. Yes. So... Did this... you get that when you listened to it? No, oh, but I, I also... 
probably was more familiar with this before I was familiar with Mahal the Mountain King. Well, it doesn't repeat over and over and over again yeah. like Hall of the Mountain King does, but that first sort of ascending... Yeah, ascending and staccato. Ascending minor, yeah. Yeah, I really like the scene. I think it works so well. It's, it sounds menacing, I think. Yeah, the timpani are interesting. You have these higher tones and then you have this synth timpani underneath it that says whoa take yeah. this seriously yeah yeah you kind of nailed this one this is this is... one that i said was the hero hero no uh, th- um you you said that he doesn't seem he, he doesn't seem quite as important as some okay. of the other characters yeah but he thinks he's the hero uh, <laughs> uh, he's, oh, he's fun he's the other one <laughs> he's the male half of the love interest he's a thief and okay. it's like super charming everyone's charmed by him this is the cute animal sidekick character Okay, okay. <laughs> this is a very minor character in the plot. What? But this music sounds so important. But she is an important character. And and are you not hearing what I'm hearing about how it ties to that cello theme from before? I get that, but two themes ago, think of that theme with this one instead. Uh, in a second. My tonal memory is not that good. Oh, that one. It's the same theme in minor with the flute. This is that character's dead girlfriend before the game starts she has died um is she a girl in the refrigerator no it doesn't quite fit that trope well maybe it does a little bit actually she's important in flashbacks the male character who thinks he's the main character mm-hmm. is super protective of the love interest character and another female mm-hmm. character because they have aspects of her and he's mm-hmm. like he feels like he just needs to protect them because he could protect her type of thing i had never thought about her being refrigerated but i think that's largely because the first thing you know about her is that she's dead basically <laughs> like the girl in the refrigerator well i no, guess the girl in the refrigerator has like a, you get sympathize yeah, you, with her yeah, and then yeah. and then she's in the refrigerator yeah. you, what's the point of her being in the refrigerator if you don't care about her right you already care about the male character long before you knew she ever existed you were saying that this one sounds like a parental figure that was because I already had picked a romantic lead <laughs> and I knew it could be that. No, I think it's interesting that the things you got, you got most things like mostly right for most of these characters, but the thing you tended to get r- wrong the most often is the character age. This is also a young character. This is a little girl. Yeah, but I could see that. I think, um, I mean, I really, like I said, I, I picked an older character because I thought it didn't make sense. I had a list of stock characters in my head and I said, I already used that one. <laughs> I think this theme is beautiful. Um, I don't know how well it super fits your character because she's like the wisecracking, um, aged beyond her years type character. But she does have like a very sad story. Her parents are not around. We don't know what happened to them. But uh, she was raised by her adoptive grandfather. This is the other one that you said sounded um, circusy. Um, but sounded oh important. militaristic. Uh, it sounded like he was you know putting a lot of importance on himself. Yeah. So this guy is sort of oh that's that one okay. This is a sort of a moral gray area character. He is a good guy, but he has to be convinced to be a good guy. Mm. Um, he is the owner of the world's only airship, which the heroes need so they can get mm. to someplace that they can. I actually the owner of the world's <laughs> only airship. Um, and he's a wandering gambler. Um, he's mm-hmm. sort of a ne'er do well type. See, I think. I do hear airship with this, and I would never have guessed airship, but I hear a behemoth rising slowly into the sky. So this one is another one of the ones that I think is a little confusing, but... Is it not a Lone Ranger type? It is. Yes! So I'm great at this. you, You kind of nailed his personality, but this definitely does give Wild West vibes. This is a ninja. So I think it's funny that, for one of the other themes before you talked about, like, Eastern exoticism... But this is coming from a Japanese composer. Well, right. So it's not exactly exoticism, but, but I, I hear it that it way. It kind of is. The book that I have on that side table that I have one more essay in to read talked about how a lot of Japanese media adopted Western ideas of what Japanese music sounds like. Oh, interesting. And used it as a self-referential thing. So, but I also think it's, um, this, and this is a parallel that I had before, and I'm glad that you picked it up, um, that the cowboy and, and the ninja are very similar characters. They work yeah. alone. Yes. They are fending for themselves. Yes. This character is a good guy. Eventually, he's he's a mercenary. So. And he wears a cowboy hat. <laughs> um, you you never really see his face. Um, this he is has a Orville Peck <laughs> mask. <laughs> this is one of the ones that you thought was a villain. This is the grandfather character to the little girl. What? Okay, okay. But uh, there, a certain type of grandfather. He's, he's Mr. Magoo. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's not bumbling, um, but he's 
eccentric. Okay. Um, but I oh, I, the dad in um Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, he's kind of that. Um, well, he I, I would say that he's kind of bumbling, but um, but he's like an inventor, and yeah. he's like yeah. This guy is holding a secret from everyone, though. You nailed it. This is the main character. She is half human, half magical beast, which is why she has magic powers, <laughs> and she is incredibly lonely for most of the game. And I feel I feel like this. I feel like this really captures her loneliness really well. This is probably my favorite of the themes. You also said like, maybe this is a mother character. And I think that's also interesting because she feels like an outsider for the whole game. And it's like a thing that she keeps on asking people, either older people or people who are like her in some way. So the other character who can use magic, when they have time alone, she asks, what does it mean to be loved? Do you have you experienced love? Because she, mm. she doesn't think it's for her because she feels like such an outsider. She is worthy of love <laughs> and so are you. Yeah, it, there's a big cataclysm in like two thirds of the way through the game and like a whole bunch of people die and like the world is in ruins basically. And the main characters are all split up and they like slowly find each other again. She happens upon a town where all of the adults are dead and she basically becomes mother to all the children characters. This one does sound like a villain, but this is a good guy. You said that this sounds like the villain who is in charge and is the thinking one behind it. And it this is basically an abominable snowman character. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Does not speak. How does that fit into everything else? He, it, this is another optional character. Hey, abominable snowman, join our gang of traveling warriors The the on our adventure. The animal sidekick can speak to him and bosses him around. Okay, <laughs> he's like Chewbacca. Yeah, kind of. It was I a might, fun game. Also, when I, whenever I did this with my students, they also nailed it. Here's the thing about music and text, right, and how they fit together, is that most of it is cultural and has to do with, like, what we've already been taught. Like, associations that we've already subconsciously made through listening to movie music, theatrical music. Broadway, other video game music, like, etc. So really, you're just following these same patterns. Mm -hmm. But I do think sort of an important tangent on that is that music is not a universal language. Everything that we think is obvious about what music means is learned. It's cultural, it's, yeah. yeah. So yeah, th this is fun. And this I'm, was fun. You helped prove a lot of the points that I'm going to be making. A plus. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it here. Maintain so, your groovy selves. Yeah, maintain your groovy selves. Thanks, you did me too. All right, bye. Bye.